Uh, this is question 5 from the January 2011 BY1 paper. Um, this is on uh, lipids, um, also known as triglycerides. Okay, uh, it's a short question. It's only worth uh, seven marks. Okay, uh, I shouldn't say it's only worth seven marks. Uh, seven marks is a lot of marks in your A-level exam. Okay, um, so let's go through it then. Uh, when a triglyceride molecule is broken down, name the uh, products uh, formed. All right, so that's testing you on your understanding of what a uh, triglyceride is composed of. Uh, so the products will be glycerol, okay, and you will then actually get uh, fatty acids being produced as well. Now you should know that there are three fatty acids attached to one glycerol, okay. Uh, so you could actually put there glycerol and uh, three fatty acids. Okay, so that's uh, that's an easy start there for two marks. Uh, part two then, uh, the type of bond broken and describe the process. All right, so uh, we're looking at what bond is broken now when a triglyceride is uh, is broken down. Okay, uh, the bond is the ester bond. Okay, and um, the name of the reaction that causes the breaking of that uh, ester bond is known as the hydrolysis reaction. Okay, just to remind you that um, every reaction that you've uh, covered in your biological molecules section, okay, are either condensation or hydrolysis reactions. And remember that they are opposites of each other, okay? So a condensation reaction forms a bond and a hydrolysis reaction breaks a bond, okay? So uh, we've actually got uh, two points we've put in so far. The, uh, the bond is an ester bond the process or reaction is a hydrolysis reaction and then you need to state that you have to chemically add water uh, for the hydrolysis reaction to occur. So there's your three marks for that part. Okay, uh, so uh, the bond is an ester bond uh, which is broken by a hydrolysis reaction which involves the chemical addition of water. Uh, lots of students tend to forget about uh, the chemical addition of water. All right, the examiner will will always want to hear that uh, when talking about hydrolysis reactions. Okay. Uh, right. Uh, lastly, then for two marks, describe two functions of lipids in plants. Right. Don't fall into the trap of writing things like um, thermal insulation or electrical insulation. All right, plants don't use lipids for that uh, function, okay? Uh, they don't have uh, nerve cells, okay? So they won't have a myelin sheath, um, uh, and therefore they don't need electrical insulation, okay? Um, however, there are some functions of a lipid that are the same in plants as well as animals, okay? For example, uh, it's a source of energy in both plants and animals so you can actually put that in all right because it it, it, it goes for plants as well so we can say it has a, a an energy storage or it's a source of energy uh, you could say that it's a, a substrate for respiration okay um, any of those would get you one mark all right uh, secondly then you can say that um, it forms the waxy cuticle on the leaves okay uh, which is which is unique to plants, obviously. Um, and lastly, then you can say that it um, it, it can form phospholipids, which is another uh, dual function. Then also in in plants and animals. All right. So just be careful not to state um, uses of lipids that are solely uh, used in animals. Okay. This this question is asking you about plants now. Okay, so I've decided to go for the formation of phospholipids uh, and as an energy storage uh, molecule. Right, let's uh, let's have a quick look at the uh, the marking scheme there. Okay, there it is. Question five. Uh, nothing really uh, to say about it. It's all, I hope, self-explanatory for you. Okay. Um, Perhaps one thing I could point out, uh, you've got membrane structure there, 
but I've said phospholipids, but you should get the mark for that. Um, we could have mentioned the waxy cuticle or uh, the waterproofing uh, of the leaf as well. Okay, so that's the, uh, the end of um, question five.